Frenchie to Servacio, the Lexus Fan Highway Patrol. Timeless in the Morning presents Real American Losers. Real American Losers. Today we salute you, Mr. Bottom Feeding, Autograph Seeking, Death Bed Physician. Mr. Bottom Feeding, Autograph Seeking, Death Bed Physician. You took the standards for heartless, hideously insensitive inappropriateness and took them to a new low. Here comes the sun, there goes your humanity. Instead of helping a beloved pop music legend spend his last few tragic days on Earth with quiet dignity, you created a circus-like atmosphere, giving press interviews, disclosing confidential medical information, even bringing your children into the hospital room to gawk at the frail, deteriorating figure of the ailing guitarist. Hey, kids, come watch the Beatles die! Not merely content to adhere to your Hippocratic oath and provide your services as a caregiver, you crave the limelight of celebrity in a manner not too different from that of another notoriously over-enthusiastic fan. I want to hold your hand so you can sign this. So here's to you, you low-life, scum-sucking, self-aggrandizing opportunist for proving that Mark David Chapman obviously shot the wrong guy. But please, accept our heartfelt wishes that your future karma includes your home address and phone number showing up one day for sale on eBay so that your many new fans can hunt you down for your autograph. Mr. Bottom Feeding Autograph Seeking Deathbed Physician! Oh, 11 minutes till the hour here in the Iron Mr. Morning program. Neglected to mention this morning, I should have. Forgot uh, radio you. legend John Gambling, John A. Gambling. Mm hmm. Died, has uh, died at the age of 73 down there in Florida. When I came to New York in 1970, 1971, mm -hmm. he was rambling with gambling. He was a big deal. He sure was. You bet. <clears throat> and the gambling radio dynasty began in 1925 on OR, WOR Radio, with the Rambling with Gambling program, the longest-running radio program in America. Mm -hmm. He hosted the show from 1959 until the late 70s when he was replaced by his uh, uh, son. Yep. And uh, he was inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame in 2000. He hosted the uh, show on OR until 2000. John R. Gambling did. That's his son. And he's now with WABC doing something. Yep. Not sure what, but he was... Um, also, I'm sorry about John Gambling. Certainly. John A. Gambling. Gambling, right. Dead at the age of 73. So. I didn't say what was the matter with him, but. Enough to kill him, well, apparently. Yes, yeah, certainly was. Well. But a disappointing morning. I don't know, just. Well, you. You were disappointed, and. Uh, some people who you were relatively close to, either professionally or personally or both. But there were things that made you happy. Today you liked Donald Trump's show last night. Well, I, didn't, I did. I saw most of it. I, I kept, she was right. I kept going in and checking yeah. with her. But she said it was good. She said it was the best reality show good. out there. Plus, very entertaining. I, I, yeah. sat, I sat down to watch just a portion of it so I could see, just catch what was it. Wound up watch, watch the whole Me thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was going got, back and forth with that in Paris Hilton show got, last night. I got sucked right into it. Yeah. It's great television. Both of them, Paris Hilton show and Donald Trump show. Right. So. No. Trump thing, very entertaining. He was very good. Yeah. Mr. Trump. Himself. He was. Yeah. Very good. I mean, the only thing about this show. Two left, Lou. No. Uh, yes. Okay. okay. The only thing about this show is a little annoying. Is that the? You know, it's not annoying. It's actually good to look at on TV. But like everybody you bring into these shows, everybody has to be good looking. You know, not everybody in the business world is good looking. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of fat, slobby people out there that make good money. Yeah. You know. So that's the only thing that guy. You know, that's. And they, they like who? Like who, what, that are fat and uh, a little slobby and make good money? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't, I, you know, I don't really know anybody personally, but oh, sure. no, I'm sure that there are people like that that are, uh, well, who are, you, who are you saying? Well, I didn't, I didn't bring it up. You're the one. No, who... well, I'm just saying. It's, it's well, you mean that all these people last night were uniformly good looking? Yeah. Well, you're wrong. What do you mean? Hey. Well, I mean, the kid that was the doctor and the well, who was fired, more. he he was kind of geeky. Dave, 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 the guy got yeah. fired, right? He was kind of... There, there was, you the know, women were nothing. beautiful. The women were beautiful. Oh, exactly. man. Amy Sam, right. and uh, what's the other guy? Sam should have been let go last night. Yeah, Sam's the a guy who tries to hold us down. He's a pussy. Yeah, he's a pussy. Sam is obsequious. He is. He's a good one. Fawning and... By the way... Like you, sir. A little bit like me, yes. I definitely thought about myself. You know, this is a story that's in Liz Smith today. 
Okay, they're going to make a movie about Pete Rose. Sure. And Charles, you know this. Don't give out the answer. All right. They have, they're down to three actors who could possibly play Pete Rose right. in the movie based upon his book. Take a guess. Take a, just a wild guess as to who the, the actor they think may do the best job with Pete Rose is. Tom Cruise. You know, you're right there. De Niro. No, I, I mean, but you're right there. Because, you know, Pete Rose looks horrible. Yeah. You, you can't have a good-looking guy play Pete Rose. Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? Time is in the morning. Now, step back, pulls up, and it's... Love it, too. I remember going to... With dry weather remains a problem. We have had no precipitation, anything, or measurable precipitation. Mike Tyson's title defense may be delayed by a rematch. The heavyweight champ became involved in a street corner run-in with Mitch Green, who lost a disputed bout with Tyson in May of 1986. Tyson was scheduled to fight Frank Bruno in October, but now sports a cast on his right hand that won't come off for three weeks. Tyson and Green may battle next in court. This is the NBC Radio Network. <laughs>
Flashback. Playdate 1966. Week number three on top of the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart. For New Yorkers, the Love and Spoonful with Summer in the City on Kama Sutra Records. The group can be traced to Cass Elliott introducing Spoonful members John Sebastian to Zal Yanofsky in the night of the Beatles, first playing in the Ed Sullivan TV show in 1964. They all watched the show together. Now, speaking of the Mop Tops, they play at Shea Stadium and their American only LP, Yesterday and Today, is number one here. In the UK, their new album, Revolver, is on top of the New Music and Express chart. Two cuts from the LP are call number ones this week there. Eleanor Rigby backed away for Yellow Submarine on Parlophone. Issued on Capital in America, the sub song seems stronger in sales here. Now the top rhythm and blues single in the United States is another cover version of Bob Dylan's Blown in the Wind, this time from Stevie Wonder on Tamla Motown. And that's the music scene this week. Play date, 1966. WNBC. Today, we understand heavier times, maybe a thunderstorm later on, too, you know. WNBC. WNBC Music Time is 519. Good morning, everybody. Last hotline here. Who's this? What time do you sleep? Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's not raw. Uh, forget. Normal summertime weather thing here. Now, if you're traveling this morning and you're in the Albany region, it's light rain there, 55. Boston, cloudy rain on the way, 61. Hartford, 57. Rain. Philly, 69 degrees. Rain. Washington, mostly cloudy, 72. Atlanta, patchy fog, 73. Miami, 80. Clear. Chicago, 80. Uh, make that 62 and clear. 85 degrees in Dallas right now and partly cloudy. Allentown, Pennsylvania, 65 in the rain. And right now at Newark Airport, light rain, 66. Light rain at Teterboro Airport, 62. LaGuardia, light rain. Rain 64, light rain at JFK 65, and Doug O'Brien, the crack meteorologist that he is in the uh, WNBC newsroom, says it's heavy rain in Midtown. He got wet. Mm. 63 WN of BC degrees. Well, he's a solitary man. What does he know? WNBC, New York. I'm Charles McCord. Here's what's happening at 5.30. WNBC News, sponsored by Southern New England Telephone. A cop shooting today in Brooklyn. A police officer trying to stop a... NBC weather, periods of rain, some of it heavy, possibly a thunderstorm, the high in the mid-70s is all. Tonight, cloudy, a 30% chance of showers, a low in the low to mid-60s. Partly cloudy tomorrow, low 80s. Friday, partly cloudy and mild. It is 63 degrees and raining all around the area and heavily in locations right now. And at 535, that's what's happening. I'm Charles McCord, WNBC New York.
on sale during Herman's Shoe Marathon. I'd like to welcome now to the Iverson Morning Program, uh, most prominent independent black film producer, Cecil Beta Man. Good morning, in the Susan. free world, the most prominent independent black producer in, in, in the free world and parts of communist China. Uh-huh. How you doing this morning, Mr. Iverson? Fine, Cecil. I'm on another promotional tour. I imagine you are. You know, that's the only reason I come see your ass. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I come here, look at your little skinny white ass, try to promote some motion pictures. I'm fine. I got four, big time. Oh, you do? Big time motion pictures. Mm-hmm. I got a movie about this uh, famous country western singer turned detective turned novelist who go berserk on a waitress in a Mexican restaurant. Uh-huh. It's called Fork Your Eye Only. <laughs> Starring Warren Oates, Warren Beatty, Ned Beatty, Betty Hutton, Timothy Hutton, Timothy Dalton, and Ernest Borgnine as the fat cook with the hair on his back. <laughs> fat cook with the hair on his back? Yeah. Uh-huh. Very important role. You know, uh-huh. supporter, but you know, I'm talking Academy Award nominee. Mm-hmm. I got a movie about the only surviving member of a famous Motown soul group and his secret sordid sex life. It's called The Last Temptation of the Last Temptation. <laughs> Starring Carl Weathers, Carl Lewis, Louis Gossett Jr., Sammy Davis Jr., Angela Davis, and Ernest Borgnine as the fat record company executive with the hair on his back. <laughs> I got a, a, a comedy about an a, 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 a overweight stand-up comedian uh-huh. and his long-suffering wife. Right. It's called Married to the Blob. <laughs> Starring Buddy Hackett, Freddie Roman, Jackie Gleason, Louis Anderson, Tubby Boots, and Ernest Borgnine as Rob Bartlett. <laughs> Then there's the jewel in my motion picture crown, Mr. Diamond. Uh-huh. The very exciting story about a, a successful DJ who gets sold like a slave to an all-sports radio network. Uh-oh. It's called Good Morning, F.A.M. <laughs> See the king of the early airwaves, Don Imus, take the sports world by storm. See him interview full of sports personalities. See him answer the damn phone. See him take on the entire listening audience at 1050 and charm them both. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, 544, 6 6 I'm Mr. Jim Kerr and the uh, Power 95 gang takes a great time to broadcast from Radio City Music Hall with a Christmas. I think Kerr's sitting there in a, in a Santa Claus suit, isn't he? Do we have one of those remote mics I can go down there with? I'll wait till it stops raining. I was still talking to Rita. Uh, go ahead, on, baby. And NBC is 548, 12 minutes till uh, 6 o'clock. I'm right on top of things here. WNBC weather. I'm not even in the morning, by, by the way. In case you don't recognize my voice, I realize you're over here at the AM dial. Uh, some rain, and it's heavy, and it is now. And there's some fat goon parked in a limo outside the uh, studio here this morning. So we pulled up behind him and honked a horn. Thought he might pull up so I could get out, you know. So he wouldn't pull up, so I banged on his window. Said some ugly things to him. I'd rather punch him out. That's right. I'm going to sports training and see if they don't mess with me. I didn't have Ken and Bubba with me, though. I had Brandt. Hello, Brandt would jump over here with people. That's crazy. Brandt's in some karate and stuff. Anyway, the guy wouldn't move. So what'd you do? Well, I called him with some ugly names. <laughs> Just like, like Mike Tyson and Mitch Green. Right. Did you hear about Mike Tyson? Yeah. Okay. Four o'clock in the morning, there's a Dapper Dan's Boutique up on 125th Street in Harlem and uh, buying clothes. Because I guess he couldn't get a hold of Bob Davis over Saks or something. The guys at Barney's weren't there. <laughs> Believable. And Mitch Green shows up. Mitch Green's the guy. Mitch Green was the guy that arrested at a gas station out in Jersey, right? That's right. What did they do? They pull in and bought some gas and then just left or something? Something like that. He oh. tells a sketch and we're going to look into it. I thought, wasn't it the deal where he took over the gas station? That was somebody else. I thought Mitch took over the gas station and was uh, selling gas to people. I don't know. Anyway, Mitch and Mike Tyson fought a couple of years ago. And so Mitch shows up at the uh, boutique, Tapper Dan's, at four in the morning, yesterday morning, and uh, I don't, and Tyson punched him. I, I, it's essentially the story. But uh, we may talk, Mitch Green may come in here later this morning. We don't know. We had Don King on yesterday, as you remember. He claims, if you can believe this, he, uh, Mitch Green claims that Don King owes him some money. Can you believe that? Whew. I'm glad I got it straight on that trip I'm taking out to Las Vegas. I don't have to pay for anything, right? Is that the deal? We heard King say that, right? We have it on tape. Yeah. Well, I don't want to get out there and have somebody, you know, try to hassle me for my American Express card. I don't need that. Anyway, rain heavy at times, and maybe a thunderstorm today. It's raining now, at least in Manhattan, high in the mid-70s.
me down here. So far this year, luxury car buyers have bought more 1988 Cadillacs than any other luxury automobile. More Cadillacs than Lincoln or Mercedes. Or any luxury mark, domestic or foreign. And for luxury buyers who've waited till the very end of the model year, there's 800 522 Wang. See how Wang makes it work for you. Coming up at 5 54, 606 on this morning. NBC. Good morning. Coming up from 558, two minutes till 6, WNBC weather, rain, heavy at times, maybe a thunderstorm, high to mid-70, 63 now in New York. There's a new Eagle on the move. The 1989 Eagle Medallion at your Jeep Eagle dealers now. In the state of Vermont, where you were governor, 97, 99, 2001, not one black or brown held a senior policy position. Not one. Uh, you yourself said we must do something about it. Nothing was done. Can you explain, since now you want to convene everyone to talk about race, uh, yeah. it seems as though you've discovered blacks and browns during this campaign. Right. How you can explain not one black or brown working for your administration? Well, well I, actually, I, I beg to differ with your, uh, with your statistics. This there. is according to your paper in Vermont. Associated Press and the Center for Women in Government. Yeah. Well, perhaps you ought not, ought not to be be believe everything oh, so you say Press. Correct? We do have African-American and uh, Latino workers in state government. No, no, I said under your administration, in, you have a senior member of your cabinet that was black or Latino. We, or we had a senior member of my staff on my oh, your fifth cabinet. floor. <laughs> no, we did not. Okay, there were not members. Then, now, then, then you I mean, need to let me talk to you about race in this country. Well, let me, let me just say one thing, uh -huh. which I've said before, but I'll say it again. If the percentage of African Americans in your state was any indication of what your views on race were, then Trent Lott would be Martin Luther King. But that, I don't think that that answers the question. I think if you're talking, about, if you want to lecture people on race, you ought to have the uh, background and track record in order to do that. And I think that uh, clearly, people, governors import talent. Governors reach all over the country to make sure they have diversity. And I think that while I respect the fact you brought race into this campaign, you ought to talk freely and openly about whether you went out of the box to try to do something about race in your home state and have experience with working at black, with blacks and browns at peer level, not as just friends you might have had in college. Way to go. That's the way, way to go, Rev. Say it on Rev. Dean had nothing to say. Had nothing. Should have told, hey, go get me a glass of water or something. <laughs> <laughs> of course, in another uh, 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 troubling appearance was uh, our friend John Kerry on Meet the Press, in which uh, Russia was just, real, well, brutal. Well, he wasn't brutal. He just, well, yeah, he was. Asked the question. He was asking the question. Yeah, but he asked him. He, he was tough. Yep. Yeah, yeah, but he was, giving, he was, Man, giving, he was giving the reasons for asking the question. To yeah, the he, he, Man, I mean, you just don't want to. Uh, you 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 have to go on me to press if they ask you if you're running for something. Yep. Did you? Just but I mean, you 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 know you'd be better it. off just to call in sick, yeah. saying so, anything. But you can't not go. Did Except that you could, what you can do is, uh, I mean, if if you refuse to appear, then oh. no, you just can't do it. You yeah. you you can't win. You you just you're just screwed. Did you see this, them standing up there? The size. Our oh, man, there, Lieberman is much taller than Dean. And but I thought Dean's Lieberman, a midget. I thought Lieberman was a Smurf, but a, he towers a, a over Dean. A, a friend of mine who shall remain nameless said that uh, they wouldn't vote for Dean because he's a midget. <laughs> you can't have some midget. And I heard, I heard that if you look at the bottom of his, he wears them elevated shoes. this person shoes. wouldn't vote for Dean anyway. He wears elevated he's shoes. He's very sensitive, as I understand yeah. it. About and he's really next to, but mostly there, sensitive. he stands it up on like his toes. looks like a hobbit. Yeah, but he stands on his toes, if you notice. He hops up on his toes all the time as a clear sign of, of a shallow in the shaft uh, size. I mean, height. Thank you very much for that, Bo. It's 12 minutes after the hour. What else going on, Charles? Why are you still here, by the way? Because you love my company. I'm waiting for no. you to find your wallet. That's why I'm here as a detective. Well, why aren't you out looking for my wallet? I have men on it right now. I know where my wallet is. As soon as I can talk to Mrs. Imus, who's taking her son to school, and my son, too, by the way. Then we'll deal with it. So anyway, go ahead, Charles. 
Evidence that attacks against coalition forces have dropped 22% since the capture of uh, Saddam Hussein, according to USA Today's front page this morning. President Bush heads to Mexico today for this 34-nation hemispheric summit. Um, people around the Northeast, short break from bone-chilling cold, but it's coming back at midweek. And uh, that's about it, I do. I just uh, got a call from the, about the coalition, Don. You know, a little update. Uh, Mr. Uh, Myers, David Myers, United States Marine Corps, first lieutenant, is going back to Iraq. He was over there. He's now going to head up the gang task force over there of the United States Marines because they're finding out that this is a organized effort of a lot of gangs over there in Iraq. And uh, David there uh, will be going back over to Iraq next month. And we're going to help him out a little bit about as far as the gang displacement of these bad people over there. And uh, a bigger article in Time Magazine about our guy uh, William Bratton out in Los Angeles. Yeah. Chief Bratton yeah. cracking down, reduced crime and so on. Like he did in Boston and here in New York. We like Chief Bratton. Uh, and uh, he's there in the 77th, cracking his with the, okay. with the gangs, and he's out yeah. there on the case. So yeah, Chief we, we, like, we right. like Chief Bratton a lot. Well, we got a good guy here. Ray Kelly's not doing too bad over here either. Oh, no, but he's police not the commander. police chief of Los Angeles. No, he's That's our guy Bill Bratton is. Well, he's the police chief of the... No, I understand that. He's he's doing, no, no, I understand that. We have 30,000 cops in New York, and they have 9,000 in oh, Los Angeles. 50,000 50, in, in New York. And I think New York has uh, really shown a real great... What's ca a real great... You've, got, you're, 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 you've overstayed your welcome. You've got to go. You've got to leave. <laughs> you, go home. You don't have a permit now. You can't pull your gun on me. So, as long as I can lock you up, pal. <laughs> I understand that. That's the main thing that bothers me. If you don't have a gun license, you can't carry your gun. You can carry bow around with you. All right, here's civil <laughs> sports, sir. All right, I'm in. Good morning. I'll give you a nice little audio uh, little thing here. Of the right. NFL playoffs from yesterday. We don't have a lot of time. Come on. We don't? No, come on. All right, here it is. Here's Brad Sham yesterday. This will be the end of the Patriots and Titans game from Saturday, actually. A 46-yard try for a field goal by Vinatieri to untie the game. Here's the snap. Here's a 46-yarder. It is limping badly, but it's good. It just cleared the bar, and the Patriots lead with 4.06 to play. All right, that was Brad Sham. Here's Joe Myers coming up on Westwood One as the Colts move on, I'm in. Green under his center. He is back to pass. Looks over the middle, dumps it over the middle. It's free home, and he's hit and can't get rid of it in time. He's looking to lateral the ball to the 40. He has dropped, and the game is over. The Indianapolis Colts are headed to the AFC title game. All right, I'm in. The Eagles would win two. Here's Dave Sims on Westwood one. Decker to hold. Snap high, placement kick. It's up. Got the distance. It is good. The Eagles are in the NFC championship game. And finally, the best of them all, as Carolina would upset the St. Louis Rams, here's Marv Albert. But take a listen to Warren Moon as he jumps in before the end of the call. The Panthers now third and 14 from their 31. Here's the ball back to throw. He fires. Beautiful catch made by Smith. Game ball. 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown. It's all over. <laughs> Got all um, I mean, they all really. do it. They all do it. The boomer of science and disease. Guy screaming game ball before Steve Smith scores a touchdown. Shut up. Got him. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Lendingtree.com presents how to get out from under debt. First, take an average guy. Well, I mean, I mean it's, it's every single time I try to get a sports report, I have to go find you. Well, you know what it is? I don't, I don't like to take time away from Bo. Bo comes in, he's got important things to say. And um, right. I want to make sure he gets it all out. What do you suppose happened between Bo and uh, Joey Potts? And Pat? Joey obviously screwed him out of some money. Oh, it's a money thing. It yeah. sounds got that it. way. Got yeah. it. Yeah. it must be yeah. financial. But, I mean, I, I could have... Uh, I could have easily uh, but, told uh, Bo that that was going to happen. I have no idea. I did tell him early on. It's the guy's a creep. So, well, I mean, he is a creep. So, anyway, uh, and his source is not leaving the shelves over at Stop and Shop. By the way, I'm serious. I've never seen like you know how like so you buy a lot of stuff and sometimes right. half the sources are gone right. and well stocked every time I've been in there. What? His sources. I don't think anybody's buying it. Well, that's fine. Uh, anyway, here's Kara with the scum report. Good morning, Kara. How are you? Good morning. All right. Well, apparently, Chelsea Clinton is following the footsteps of her cigar-sticking father's cheating ways. Uh-oh. Yep. The Inquirer is reporting that Chelsea and her boyfriend, Ian Kloss, had an ugly rebel clash as he accused the brittle-haired former first daughter of cheating. Apparently, the fight took place in Miami Club 
where she was performing a boozy table dance with Mark Wahlberg. That's something we do not need to see. Chelsea Clinton, a table wow. dance? Yeah. Uh huh. Sex with Chelsea like bestiality? No, no, come on, no, no, come on here. No, well, no, no. Yeah, but my goodness, what do you say? Yep. Mark yep. Wahlberg? Marky Mark? Mark. Yep, yeah, Marky yeah. Mark, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I thought she had a serious boyfriend, I thought. Wasn't she getting married? Well, she just said that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe you could listen. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she makes uh, Amy Carter look like a beauty queen, yeah. for God's sake. Yeah. So yeah. they had a public fight? Public fight, apparently. Uh, back at their hotel, it was loud enough where a lot of people had gathered around the door and were listening in. So. Oh, God, we're, we're, we're some tape for that, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> What's going on in sports, then? All right, I'm in. We're all set up for championship weekend. Exciting stuff now. The Colts move on. They win in Kansas City yesterday. So they're going to be in New England on Sunday. That's going to be a 3 p.m. Eastern time start. And Sunday night, the NFC Championship, all ready to go as the Philadelphia Eagles, who won yesterday, beat the Green Bay Packers, will, of course, host the Carolina Panthers. And a couple of awful coaching jobs this weekend. You could start with what you said all morning long, I man. You're exactly right. Mike Sherman in Green Bay yesterday. Fire, Fire him? Yeah. Get rid of him, right? Yeah. And the other guy, of course, is St. I Louis. Mean, you can't go for it. And uh, like, I was just talking to Jody. Uh, what's your guy's name? Uh, uh, McDonald? The guy you work with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just talking to Jody. Jody Bell. Yeah. You can't go uh, fourth and one yeah. uh, on the one-yard line. Uh, you can't go, rather than kick a field goal, they went for it and didn't make it. Right. The Packers did. Right. So if you're going to gamble then, yeah, and you got you, you got fourth and two feet with two and a half minutes or so left in the game, and if you got Amon Green and Brent Favre and you can't make a, then you shouldn't play football. You're right. You You're right. You should take the cheeseheads and have a bonfire yep. and not have a football game. It's <laughs> stupid. And you knew right away when the Packers punted that ball. Was, I was in the car listening, and I'm, I, 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 I said that I did, but at the, I've been screaming. <laughs> I said, this, this is over. Yeah. Well, it's just stupid. But actually, well, because you'd be, you'd be give the ball to Donovan McNabb, and what did he do? What did he do? He marched it down the field. Right. Tied the game, and then he won it. And in spectacular fashion, too, I man, because there's a fourth and 26. Looked like the Philadelphia Eagles season was going to be over. Yeah, and guess they, what? Guess what? Yeah. What happened? Not over. Which actually makes all of us happy because we, we all want Rush Limbaugh to look worse and worse. Yes, we do. And he is on a weekly basis. He's going to check into rehab again. I, <laughs> I, had a, I had a difficult time deciding. It didn't make any difference to me. I would have, I would have been happy had either one of them won. Yeah. But it was a good story for Brent Favre. And it was a, probably a, a, really a good story for... Uh, sure. Uh, Donovan McNabb. It's a great you know. story for Donovan yeah. McNabb. Now, as we've done here in the past, you know, in the last couple of years, you've actually picked the winners of championship weekend and done yeah. a very good job early in the week. Right. So it's Monday, so let's do it now. Carolina in Philadelphia, NFC championship. Who's playing in the Super Bowl in the NFC? Eagles, Patriots. Eagles, Patriots. Yeah. Well, there it is. Those are the top seeds. Yeah. So no surprises there. No. By the way, all four underdogs this weekend came Don't through. even bother to go to New England. Don't even go. No. <laughs> Which, hey, stay in Indianapolis, wherever you are. And what, what did you say about Tennessee last week? Stay home. And what, would they have been better off? Well, yes, they yeah. would have. But when they got a cold. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. You feel bad for those people out in, in uh, New England on Saturday night, by the way. The temperatures there were, were below zero. Oh, you've got to be a mental patient to go to, the, yeah. I mean, to go to the game, but they had fun, and they're drunk, and that's what it comes they're all down. bundled up, and yeah. I, it probably was fun. So Yeah. You ever been hey. to a football game like that where it's been, like, really, really cold like that? Or? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. You ever been to a football game? And you know where you yes. were? Years ago, I used to go with the cops up there. Oh, watch a jet. I used, to, I used to hang out with these cops up on the 24th of Manhattan, and we would all go to the Jets games. Oh, really? Well, we'd go out a couple hours early and get drunk. Right. Or we'd be drunk before we left. Mm -hmm. And so I don't remember all that much, but... Was Namath, I guess, was the Namath era for the Jets, right? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea it was plain. Officer, I pants. just know I was drunk. I need my pants, officer. I was drunk and I was with a bunch of cops. <laughs> some of them I still know. Hey, really? Maybe. Yeah. No. It's never cold. No. no. 26 up there. 112 to go. Eagles season on the line. Down 17-14. Fourth is 26. At their own 26, going left to right. Here comes Ford down. Here comes a four-man rush. McNabb hanging, throwing down the middle. Got a man there. Mitchell makes the catch, but he's short of the first down. He's across midfield at the 50. Wow, they're going to give it to him. They're going to give it to him at the 46-yard line at Green Bay. First down, Philadelphia. I saved over $20,000 when I sold my house. 13000 the only thing, that, the only reason that for anybody to watch these debates at all is because of Reverend Al. She's sure. Very entertaining. Who made the headline last night? Yeah. She heard Reverend Al, too, complaining. That was hosted, uh, well, moderated by Lester Holt. 
and he, he went to Reverend Al last, which is you know, the ninth, ninth out or whatever it is, and he's complaining that Lester didn't go to him because he's black until he, until he put him last in the line because he's black. Meanwhile, Lester Holt is uh, at least half black himself. Yeah, but not really. I mean, Al Sharpton's a black man. Lester Holt's a white man. Al Sharpton's a whining titty baby. Listen, you don't got to... Listen, you know me. But everything's about race. It's just like you. With everything's because you're a Jew. If somebody looks at you sideways. And with yeah, Al Sharpton, sure. everything's because he's black. I'm down with Bernie on this. Well, hold on a second. <laughs> me. Well, wait a second. But if Al Sharpton doesn't... Right on, if Al Sharpton doesn't win, why won't he win? Because he's a crooked... Because he's black. No, he's a crook. Well, we know that. But on top of if it... If Colin Powell ran tomorrow... In, uh, uh, in the Democratic race, he'd win. Well, yeah. Hands down. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, well, he's not wrong. Guess what? He's black. Well, but he hasn't well, run. The premise is all screwed no, up. But, 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 but your hypothetical uh, is stupid uh, 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 because uh, 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 he has not running, and until a black man no, 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 actually no, no. wins, it's a hypothetical. But it's stupid. It's a hypothetical. It doesn't make any no, sense. No, he's not running. That's why it's a hypothetical. Don't tell me about Sharpton because I was only upset because he stabbed this guy with a plastic butter knife that when he used to write the knife, he wouldn't be running right now. I'll tell you that right now. No, no, no. No, no, we don't need that. I hate Al Sharpton. I can't stand him. Yeah, but you're, you're like-minded, though. What are you talking about? All those things in Crown, in Crown Heights, all the problems between the blacks and the Jews, that was all that was all spurred on by this 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 fat piece of garbage, Sharpton. This loser. That's all strong, but... Well, should have finished the job. That's all I'm going to say. No, because uh, that's... <laughs> a, no, no. Shut up. No, we shouldn't I'll have finished you. the job. I mean... Why not? Well, because you can disagree with somebody, but I mean... I should just stick to sports, something you, well, I was going to say something you know, but then that would be. Well, actually, you know what, here's something, you know, Pete Rose came out last week with the baseball book and everything, the sure. gambling and all that yeah, stuff. Right, right. So you guys know that back in 1963, former Green Bay Packer great Paul Horning was suspended from the NFL for gambling. And I guess he, he kept his mouth shut. He wasn't the only one involved. Alex Karras is also suspended for gambling as well. But I guess there were a bunch of players that were gambling along with Paul Horning. He's never said anything about that for 40 years. But now Paul Horning coming out with a tell-all book, and he is, quote-unquote, ready to name names. The book is called Golden Boy. He's got sorted stories about Bear Bryant, Jim Brown, Gail Sayers. This according to uh, Russia Malloy in today's Daily News. And he is about ready to come out and start naming names of other NFL players that were gambling, because Paul Horning, of course, took the fall back in 1963. Any interest in that whatsoever? None. Really? Zero. Less than zero. Good. Good. No. It's irrelevant. Yes. Wake me Here. up. Well... But what else if you found out that, you know, one of your, your, your childhood heroes, one of the all-time greats, was involved in betting on football while they were playing? You don't think, you, you don't think that's an interesting story? <laughs> well, you've got to give it up. <laughs> yes, uh, no, I don't. <laughs> give up. Give up. I don't know what it's for. What? I guess it's kind of like a Sammy the Bull move, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, kind of that rat thing. That you I mean, do. suddenly we run out of things to do and yeah. endorsements. Well... And uh, we're going to end our life by ratting out everybody. Well, I mean, that's disgraceful. Well, but these guys need money. That's what it comes down to. Oh, Rose yeah, and Horning and degenerate gamblers, they need the money, so this is what they do. Like me, I'm going to write a book one day myself. I don't think Horning's a degenerate gambler, you, is he? He got suspended for gambling for him. Well, I think he bet a few bucks on something. No big deal. Well, no, no, I think he's a degenerate gambler. Oh, you do? I, I think. But again, this is just, I, I have no proof, so I don't want Paul to get upset, but I'm, it's just my opinion. Yeah. Once a degenerate gambler, always a degenerate right. gambler. Most yeah. notorious recidivists are gamblers and pedophiles. Right. Of which Sid is both. Correct. What? <laughs> <laughs> Here's Charles with an update of what's going on in the world, Charles. Uh, recidivist? What? <laughs> <What's right? laughs> Former Treasury Secretary Paul O'Neill claims the president made removing Saddam Hussein from power a top priority months before the September 11th attacks. Things reportedly calmed down for U.S.-led forces in Iraq since the capture of Saddam Hussein, although... We have a late report, the U.S. military saying a bomb attack in Baghdad has taken the life of another American soldier and wounded two others. There are no other details about that uh, at the moment. White House officials say President Bush and Mexico's president are likely to spend the day at the Summit of the Americas okay. talking about Bush's plan to legalize millions of undocumented okay. workers. Two words for Vicente, Vicente Fox. Shut up. <laughs> I guess that's one word. Okay, <laughs> Maricón. And Howard Dean on the defensive last night regarding his record on race while governor of Vermont. Yeah, well. Grudgingly conceding during the final debate before the caucuses that he never named a black or Latino to his cabinet it's during matter, 12 Joel. years as governor. It's going to resonate with the people in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're going to care about that. Well, I don't know why, dude. 
And uh, that's, you know, that's about it. Yeah. Top stories at the moment. Well, all right. what can I tell you? Another possible SARS case being investigated in China. That would be the third in the country this year. And in Israel, an angry reaction to a plan to evacuate some Jewish settlements in the West Bank and Gaza. More than 100,000 settlers and their backers turned out for a big demonstration to express themselves in Tel Aviv. If I find my wallet, yep. it will be a good day tomorrow. If not, it won't. That's not good. <laughs> oh. God, it's annoying. Yep. And then, uh, I, don't, I just don't even want to think about it. On the 32-yard line of Packers' own 32, they go right to left. Far, play fake, blitz coming, throws one deep that field, and Eagle can get it. It's up for grabs, it's intercepted by the Eagle. On the far side at the 40, 45, 50. At the 45, coming up field at the 40. To the 35-yard line, Brian Dawkins! With the interception, and the Eagles bring it back to the 34-yard line at Green Bay. I've had choices. Since the day that I was born, there were voices that told me right from wrong. If I had listened, no, I wouldn't be here today, living and dying with the choices I've made.
supplies they didn't, the president didn't claim it, that uh, Alcoa aluminum siding they put on the barn down there to rust and rust or something. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the next one. <laughs> well, it doesn't really look good, though. I mean, it's starting to look awful, as a matter of fact. Just this, you know. I mean, Colin Powell essentially said, of the, of the however many reasons it was that he uh, articulated over there to the United Nations at 19 or 29 or whatever it was. You know what it was, Charles or David? Okay. Anyway, none of those have proved to be the case. The rationale for going to war with Iraq, and it, uh, it, uh, it turns out that Bernard was right, and, well, among others. Well, one of the things, uh, Richard Pearl, you know, who's just who's on the Defense Policy Board, that advisory board, and has just written uh, a, a new book about the war on terrorism. He was quoted the other day, and, and, and I thought it was actually uh, pretty accurate that while it's certainly not good, he conceded that weapons of mass destruction have not been found and that the intelligence was off base, these are his words, uh, that the American people fundamentally agreed with the proposition that Saddam Hussein had the capacity and the desire to reconstitute a nuclear weapons program, to build up a weapons of mass destruction program, and that that combined with his other actions and attitudes uh, created a threat for the United States. Well, they should have said that then. Not right, that, and that's not what they said. Not that they had them, and they were poised to blow up Detroit and New York and Cleveland or wherever. Right. So, I found my wallet. Well, that's great. I didn't, I didn't realize that that was an issue. Yeah, I lost it. Oh. And I, uh, I, I compared that to looking for weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. So I sent Brian up to Connecticut, and they looked to they looked everywhere there, and it wasn't there. So once we had determined it wasn't there, then we moved to what I would describe as uh, Syria. That would be my apartment. <laughs> and we located my wallet in Syria, or in my apartment. Well, well what's your wallet like? I mean, uh, what kind of stuff do you, do you have in there? All of my credit cards and my yeah. gun license. Like your gun license? No. I mean, do you keep, you keep pictures in there? Maybe a, a, a moto photo card or blockbuster or something? No, I have a picture of my son and my wife. That's great. And that's it. So, but I have it now. So I found it, so, but not where we thought it originally was. Good stuff. Which could be a lesson for the administration. That's my point here. I realize you're making fun of me. No, 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 I'm and not. If you were here, I'd stab you in your eardrum with my I, pen. But I just, I, I am trying to make conversation, and it just, you know, it, it's not going well. It shows a little mellow this morning. It's kind of the convalescent home version of the morning. <laughs> but that's fine. I mean, it's, we can go with that. <laughs> you really are an awful person. <laughs> oh, man. So where does the, how long is the president going to stay in Mexico? He'll be here today. He's got uh, he's got some more meetings. And what is he meeting with? Well, error, Jive. The research paper by a professor at the Air War College at Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama, says the administration strategy promises much more than it can deliver and threatens to spread the military too thin. And world health experts are investigating whether the first SARS case in China this year may be linked to uh, rats rather than apparently to civet cats. Right. And uh, that's about it, I do. Uh, Kara Dugan and Sid Rosenberg are both uh, coming up. And then we'll talk with uh, Doris Kearns Goodwin. It is 13 minutes after the hour. Now it's time for America's favorite daytime fun show. For Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, which I'm going to say again. Yeah, won the weekend again. God, what a great movie. Unbelievable. Won again. What? It won again. It did? Won the weekend, yep. Sure. You know, it's so... Have you seen it? I haven't seen the third one yet. No, I, I like it. Have you seen it, Karen? Have you seen, uh, have you seen the first one? Yes, I have. Uh, it. Good. Do you see the first two? Yes. Why yes. haven't you seen the third one? No, I have to get Frankster on that. Take me to a movie and some dinner. Well, what is Frank doing? Uh, nothing, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm fine. I don't, no, I don't want to start anything with yeah. Frank here. Not yeah. getting done, are okay. we? You don't want to do that. Aren't you and Frank getting married? <laughs> yes, we are. When are you getting married? June 26th this year. Oh, really? I got married June 25th. Look mm -hmm. at that. Look yeah. at that. Well, how about that? That is very good. Have you reconciled your problems with Frank? Yeah, but I don't think he's reconciled them with me. I mean, I, you, you would know better. He's your orphan. What does Frank actually think of me, all kidding aside? 
Uh, I can't use that language. Thank you very much. Very good. Very good. Oh, come on. It was only, it was only good fun. But, I actually like Well, fun. you were drunk, and uh, that's, that's embarrassing. Anyway, let me talk to you for a second here about <laughs> Thymus Ranch food products, which uh, just based on salsa sales, we were able to give the ranch $350,000 last year because all after-tax profits go to the Imus Cattle Ranch for Kids with Cancer. The new labels are all Imus Ranch dressing. Yeah. All right, Imus Ranch salsa, Imus Ranch dressing. I gave Charles some of the balsamic Unbelievable. vinaigrette. Unbelievable. From one who knows his vinaigrette. It's good, isn't it? Excellent. It really, it really is. So we have that. We have seasoned ranch. Surprisingly good. Well, my wife said it was good. Wouldn't think that the I Man could come well, up with anything quite it. that good, but boy, it is delicious. I'm what? telling you. And then, uh, and then the new Imus Ranch coffee bags are available too. Yeah. So. All right. And con and new coffee. It's, a, it's fabulous stuff. So you need to. You don't need to buy it because the money goes to the ranch. You need to buy it because it's, it's the number one selling salsa on the East Coast, so it's a, there's a reason for that. So. And nobody's on any salary. All the money goes to the ranch, mm -hmm. 100% of it. 22 after the hour here on the Amherst Morning Program. Kara Dugan's in the studio. What's, what's going on in the world of scum, Kara? Well, if I first can tell you guys, I'm what? very happy to be here today for one reason. I actually what? have the warm and fuzzies because Mark Chernoff is substituting for right. Bernard. I have him in my dreams for the past... Two nights. Oh, God. Mark Yeah, it's Suka. She Why? told me yesterday. Why? She told me this. I'm riding a bike around my old neighborhood, and Chernoff is gardening. <laughs> and I pull my bike over, and he yeah. walks over to me with a hose. I swear this is true. And then it ends abruptly. Two nights in a row. That's the dream I'm having. I don't know. Chernoff, do you want to uh, plant something in my bush, or what's going on? Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Well, no, but don't minute, just think minute. of it to yourself. Don't tell us about it. It's Freudian because oh, Chernoff is walking over with his hose. Oh, my God. Oh, I don't know what, what are you nuts? That's Freudian. That's Freudian. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, God. he does come up to about my waist, yeah. so it, it might work out well. well. Oh, oh. This is, uh... I'm going to have nightmares. Oh, this is not good. <laughs> this is a nightmare. You can't make it up. Oh, no, well, no, then don't go. Oh, my God. My wife will think it's my dream. Good one. Where are you, Ken? What kind of scum stuff do you have? Well, that? well we have yet another George Harrison update where his wife God is almighty. now defending Dr. Gil Lederman. Whose wife? Uh, Dr. Gil Lederman, the one that uh, forced George Harrison to sign an autograph while he was dying. Well, so, whose wife is defending? Uh, Dr. Gil Lederman's wife. Oh, the doctor's wife. What is she saying? Exactly. Say? So she's trying to cite these examples of why he's this outstanding citizen, saying how... All his patients had attended his kids' bar and bat mitzvahs. All right, obviously looking for a check. <laughs> uh, you know. No, 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 no. That's, that's a shot at the Jews, isn't it? Oh, come on. No, come that's on not, not a Jew show. Well, Frank's Jewish. Isn't Frank Jewish? Frank's uh, half Jewish. No, he's Frank's uh, half Jewish. Paul Mary? Come on. Frank Paul Mary? <laughs> half Jewish? Well, I don't think so. Well, no. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, then, what's his wife saying? Well, she's saying that how he also threw a barbecue first, speaking of Italians, a group of Italian patients with a steel drum musician and some barbecue burgers and stuff. Italians don't want barbecue burgers no. and steel no. drum players. No. They want real Parmesan and a couple of bottles of Chianti. Come yeah, on, yeah. come Pretty on much. now. But this is how she's saying he's such an outstanding person and that he really is an opportunist, like well, everyone's citing that's him proof to it up for me. Hey, yeah, listen, that's, that's, that's right. Told me. Yeah. Yeah. Shoving like a guitar in front of a dying George yeah. Harrison, and yeah. Harrison yeah. doubted that he could sign it and wasn't sure he could spell his name. I mean, he was two weeks from two dying, weeks from right? Dead, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just and he said, oh, sure, you can spell your name. Yeah, come on. I guess you can spell it for him. Come on, you can do this. Oh, all right, thanks, Kerr. What's going on in sports, Seth? Well, a couple of things. First of all, Dan Marino is now becoming the senior vice president and GM of the Miami Dolphins, so I am imploring Ross Greenberg this morning at HBO Sports, as people have already contacted me about me possibly replacing Dan Marino and inside the NFL. And uh, I am just telling these guys that I am available, so if they want to call back, I'd be happy to fly out, talk to these people, and take that job as soon as possible. I think I'd be the perfect guy. Because there's Dan Marino, listen, good-looking guy, speaks nicely, but he sucked on TV. And there's no other yeah, way. awful. He's absolutely awful. So yeah. I think I am, forget about Phil Simms and Boomer Esaias and all these meatheads who know a little bit about football but nothing about television. Right. Go to the guy that can make this thing work. Go to me. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm right here. Sure. ready to go. Here now the National Syndicated <laughs> Sports columnist, Michael Lippert. Good morning, yeah. Lippert. Hey, good morning, Mr. Imus. How are you? I'm yeah. fine. <laughs> so whose fault is the Roger Clemens deal? Is it uh, Clemens? Is he just 
just a rat or is it a sign runner or who? Well, I mean, if, if Pettit doesn't go to Houston, it never happens. Right. But I, I can't imagine why anybody would be surprised that Roger did this. I mean, he left the Red Sox over money. Yeah. He decided he didn't want to be a Blue Jay anymore as soon as Randy Johnson got $13 million a year. So he came here because the Yankees would pay him, and he had a chance to finally win a World Series ring, right. which he did. Yeah. And, you know, I, I wrote this in my column today. Did he mean it when he was, said he was retired? They all mean it when they say they're retired. Yeah. But it's reached the point where I don't think anybody who would ever go to a night when somebody's retiring would ever believe that they're not going to see him in six months either playing for the same team again or playing for another uniform. You know, he actually was, was uh, Pettit actually gave them a chance and sort of teased them before he went to, to Houston and ended up taking a lot more money than the Yankees were willing to offer. So all this trader rat stuff, I you know, I... I think Roger started saying what everybody wanted him to say about the Yankees to make everybody love him a little more. Yeah. And, and, and now that's the stuff, more than anything, that's the stuff that's come back to bite him over the last two days. But the minute Pettit went to Houston and, and stood at his press conference, kind of joked that he was going to um, uh, try to get Roger to come out of retirement, there were, there were people in baseball who said, you can book it now. Roger Clemens is going to be the opening day pitcher for the Houston Astros. And that's exactly the way it, uh, it, it played out. I so want Keith Jackson, by the way, to get back all the stuff he got. Remember that big tour? Well, when he had his big tour. Well, yeah, the well, big tour. And he got something at every, uh, every game. They get, I think at one point somebody gave, I don't know why they give Keith Jackson a motorcycle, but I, I, <laughs> I think at one point the old fool got a motor. I mean, he got everything. And he kept it, and he's still doing the games. You have come up with a great idea. Well, the next year, we'll have Keith Jackson give back night. <laughs> no, but I mean, they, they should make him give back the stuff. They, Don't you think? You, you have come, I'm telling you, this is a great idea. There can now be the Don Imus tag sales all over sports. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's Steinbrenner's fault, then. And Roger's a skunk. We already knew that. And Steinbrenner was just, well, was he stupid for not signing Pettit? The feeling I had, and I think everybody who, who has followed this, if, if Andy Pettit had been somebody else's free agent after this season, if he had won 24 games, say, for the Mets or the Dodgers, and he was now available, Simon would have gone after him with everything, and he must have thought that he could take care of all this other business, right field, doing this, doing that, and that Pettit would be waiting there for him, and, and that's not the way it worked out. And... It's the dumbest thing. Letting Pettit go was the dumbest thing he did since he let Reggie go, you know, 22 years ago. Uh, and uh, the Mets now, who's this guy they were going to sign? Vladimir Guerrero. And yeah, well, what, he, he's with the Angels now. Why'd that deal fall through? The Mets had concerns about his back, and they were only willing to offer a certain amount of guaranteed money. Um, if, if I, you know, I always qualify this. If I were them, I would have offered him more money. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not my money. Right. And so they felt that if, if he showed up at, play, at the plate 400 times for three years, that, that, that all this stuff would kick in and he'd get $70 million. But when you present that kind of offer, and then the Angels come over and say, we don't care if you show up to work at all, we'll guarantee the $70 million. which deal are you going to take? Joseph Abood gave me a, uh, a really nice uh, vintage uh, Boston Red Sox jacket. Right with leather sleeves and did you see it? Yeah. No, it's not a zipper deal. It has no, no, it's, it's, I mean? yeah, it's a cool looking jacket. Yeah. Well, well, well so what I'm, I, I plan on wearing that whenever, you know. But whenever whenever the Red Sox are going good. What I'm wondering is uh, how, if, uh, how you can get the socks off of it <laughs> and not ruin the jacket when things go to hell in, uh, in late September. So. Well, is it, isn't that... A little like wearing a, a class ring and taking off the school crest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're on the same page, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Lubick here on the Amish Morning Program. Doris Kearns Goodman is coming up. Day 30 in New York. I'm in the morning. Hi, I'm Ben Benson. You heard me talk about my restaurant a lot, but now there are lots of other people talking about it. Gourmet Magazine, for example, after raving about our beef. They called Ben Benson's a true treasure in Manhattan. It was a beautiful thought and made me very happy. And then that was topped by the one in Esquire magazine in which they said that this restaurant serves the best American food in the United States of America. Well, I've been saying that for years, but when somebody else says it, it's high praise indeed. In addition to the food, the other thing I am most proud of is our waitstaff. 
We have the most professional and courteous and amiable staff in all of New York City. They are proud of the product, they are proud of the house, and that certainly shows in the way they treat the customers. Ben Benson Steakhouse, we're at 123 West 52nd Street, 212-581-8888, and when you're in, come over and say hello to me. Open, the small business network from American Express, where small business owners come for solutions. The following dialogue between American Express business card members can be found at OpenNewYorkCity.com. This is Dimitri Maiolis, partner at Savant Solutions, a small business computer support company in Elmwood Park, New Jersey. We're growing faster than we're generating cash flow. What are some of the options for financing or growth without giving up equity? This is Alfred Hedaya. I'm president of the Hedaya Capital Group. We're located in downtown Manhattan. Dimitri, this is my company's business. It's called invoice discounting. You sell us your receivables at a discount. We give you the cash for that amount up front. Then your client pays us the full amount of the invoice. That way you got operating capital right in hand. This is Mike Mason, president of M2 Group Corp. We're an e-commerce and web hosting provider in Fresh Meadows. You can do something similar yourself just by offering your customers a discount for early payment. You'll lose a few percentage points on the sale, but if a lot of customers take advantage of it, your money will be in the bank faster. This is Mike Loyak, Vice President of TradeshowPopUp.com, located in Lynnhurst, New Jersey. Financing isn't always the best solution. Talk to your vendors and...